Give God a praise in the house, somebody. Don't pat a cake. Ah, oh, you pat a cake. Don't pat a cake. Give God a praise. Amen. Greetings to you from the great state of Alabama. I send you greetings from my wife, Linda. 48 years. My son, Matthew. My daughter, Sarah Elizabeth. Matthew gave me my, thank you, my two grand girls. And Sarah needs a husband. <laughs> my daughter, Sarah, is 35. 30, I'm sorry, she'll slap me. She's 33. She needs a husband. You better make a lot of money. And if you want to apply, you see me at the book table at the end of the service, and we'll get you lined up and see if that can't happen very quickly. God is a good God, isn't he? He's a good God. Thank you for all uh, the speakers today. Thank you for the great praise and worship uh, all during the day and tonight. Uh, it created an atmosphere in this room that's here, and you can sense it and I can sense it. It's an atmosphere of God's presence in the room. Uh, my latest book is not out there, but the latest book I've got, I got the blood book here because we're going to do the blood, but uh, it's in his presence, 30 seconds, 20 seconds, 10 seconds. Ask Moses about it. Getting in God's presence will change your life forever. And I'll tell you about that as I speak tonight about how a 10-year-old boy, how I got in the very presence of God. Uh, it's, it's the year 2020. The word is P-E, pay in the Hebrew, and it means to declare. It means to declare for the decade, the next 10 years, and for 2020, this one year, we have got to declare the word of God like we've never declared it before. We've got to start speaking it boldly. We've got to go into the marketplace. We've got to go into the TV markets. We've got to go everywhere that we can to get the gospel of Jesus Christ into every area we can get it into. They won't tell you about the, the secret church in China that's growing 100,000 a year. They won't tell you about the, the revival in Iran because they keep it so silent. They won't tell you about what's happening in France. Yes, I said France is in revival. They won't tell you about that on the newscast, but it's happening all around the world. They won't tell you about the men that meet in the mountains of Tibet every morning to have that coffee so strong it'll grow every hair you got out. And they have their coffee every morning sitting around the table, drinking that coffee, talking about the day like some of you go to McDonald's and do right now with your buddies. And, and one day, Bob, they were all silent. Nobody said nothing. Nobody's talking. They go, what's the problem here? What's the matter? One of them finally spoke up and said, last night during a dream, a man in white came to me and said, I'm the way. And every man in that room had the same dream. A revival started in the mountains of Tibet. An American missionary got there a year later and left because a revival is already there in the mountains. God, give God a praise, somebody. It's, it's happening. It's happening around the world. We travel, missionary evangelists. Yes, I've been State Farm agent 45 years. Thank God I make a lot of money. I coached five years of high school football, went to work for State Farm. I celebrated my 45th anniversary. Didn't have nothing to do with my life, so I joined the Army National Guard in Alabama, stayed 30 years and made full bird colonel. Never did any active duty. So you veterans, you got me a little bit there. Never no active, but I did travel around the world. I was an aide to Petraeus when Petraeus was a two-star. I was his aide for six months. That's a big deal, Bob. Tell Bob Rogers about that. That's a big deal. You need to tell him about that. But that's something else. I was on my way home from a State Farm meeting in 1992. I was driving down the interstate, driving too fast, like I always do. I need angels in my car at all times because I drive too fast. And God spoke to me and said, what are you going to do about Hilton Haddock? 
I haven't seen Hilton Haddock in 10 years. I said, what do you want me to do about Hilton Haddock? No answer. I called my mother. Let me tell you what I had. I had a bag phone that plugged into my cigarette lighter. I didn't have no computer that you're holding in your hand right now. That's what it is, a computer in your hand right now. You got a computer. I had a bag phone. I called my mother on that bag phone and said, tell me about Hilton Haddock. She said, Tommy, Hilton Haddock's at UAB Hospital in Birmingham, Alabama, dying with pancreatic cancer. Cancer of the pancreas, no chemo, no radiation. God has to show up. It's cancer of the pancreas. I got the next exit, made the turn, went downtown UAB Hospital and found him on the eighth floor in the cancer ward and walked in his room. Tongue swollen, feet swollen, IVs in his arms, feeding him through a tube in his throat. And he mummed the word, Tommy Combs. I said, Hilton, what's happening? He said, I'm dying. I said, what are the doctors doing? He said, watching me die. I said, can I pray for you? Yes, sir. I took my coat off, took oil, and laid on his body. I didn't lay straight up and down. I laid across, put my hand right on his pancreas, and God healed him. God healed him. He came home in two days. They watched him two days just to check him out at the hospital. Brought in every doctor they could find to see. But he was totally healed by the power of God. I said, all right, I can do this. I, I can do this, God. This is what you want me to do. I can retire from State Farm. I can travel as a healing evangelist. I can go. He said, you're not doing none of that. You're going to do exactly what I want you to do, when I want you to do it, and I'll tell you when I want you to do it if you'll listen to me. And I listened to him. I fast every Friday, ever Friday, for the last 20 years. Put that together. I do 40 days every year. From the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur, I back it up in the middle of August and do 40 days. If you want the power of God, you pay the price to get the power of God, and he'll show up. If you don't want to play with it, don't play with it. But if you want the power of God and you'll pay the price to get the power of God, it'll show up and you'll do great and wonderful things for God. I'm telling you right here, full gospel businessmen coming back big time. Somebody give God a praise for that one. Some of you grew up in it all your lives. It's coming back big time. You go in the marketplace in your city, and the cities are ripe for you to show up and take the inner city around this world. I'm telling you, I said around the world. Not across the U.S., but around the world. I'm talking about the nations of the world are ready for you folks to come in and take control of the inner cities. It's going to happen. I prophesy it. I prophesy it to you. You can't get over it. I just prophesied it to you. It's going to happen. So you better get ready for it. It's going to happen. If you have your Bibles, I'm in one verse, 3 John 1, 2. 3 John 1, 2, if you have your Bibles. Don't be surprised what you see God do in this house. Don't you be surprised if I blow on you because sometimes he'll tell me, blue, and I will, because I do what, exactly what he tells me to do. So don't, don't let that hurt you. Stand up for the reading of the word, please, if you will. Stand for the reading of God's word. 3 John 1, 2. You got it? Say amen. amen. If, if you don't have it, don't say amen. Beloved, I pray. Some Bibles say wish. The word is pray. I pray above all things that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Let me read it again. You got to get it. Beloved, I love you. And because I love you, I'm praying for you. And I'm praying above all things that you prosper. Somebody say prosper. prosper. And be in health even as your soul prosper. Lord, I thank you tonight for this great presence I feel in here tonight. Lord, I thank you tonight as we come into your presence to worship you. I thank you tonight what you're going to do here tonight that springs revival across this land. 
We give you all the honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. I come here tonight to tell you that I want you to prosper. Somebody say prosper. And I want you to be in health. The Spirit of the Lord says through John. Now, John wrote this. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. That John wrote this. First, second, third John. And he's writing a letter to his good friend Gaius. And he's writing to his good friend Gaius. And he said, Gaius, I love you. And because I love you, I'm praying for you. When you see words or concepts in our Bible and their concepts and ideas and they get repeated over and over, it's time for you and me to start paying attention to what God's saying. Help me preach. I got to pay careful attention to what God's saying when God repeats things to me. Peter, Peter, he better listen, Peter. Tommy, Tommy, I'm picking up my ears and I'm trying to hear what God's got to say. He repeats things because he wants us to pay attention to what he's got to say. When the God of the universe that created everything wants to speak to me, I'm going to pay attention. I'm going to turn off NCIS and whatever the name of that other one is, Bull and uh, FBI now. And whatever, I'm turning it off. And I'm going to spend a little time with God. If he says, Tommy, I got something to tell you, I'm dropping everything. And I'm going to pay attention to what God's got to say. Most of us know that the New Testament is made up of letters written by the apostles. Apostle Paul wrote most of it for us. Letters were written. But this book, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John is not a letter. It's a postcard. One chapter. That's a postcard. That is not a letter. John wrote a postcard to his good friend Gaius. And he said, Gaius, I love you. And because I love you, I'm praying for you. More than a desire, the word here is pray. What he's saying is, I pray above all things that I want you to prosper and be in health. John is speaking to a person, yes. He's talking to his good friend Gaius. But he's also speaking to you and me through the word of God. He's saying to them in the context of this prayer, I love you and I'm praying for you and I want you to prosper and be in health. Now that brings me to my first point. Cameraman, you gotta go. Brings me to my first point. Who are you praying for? Who are you praying for? Who do you go to the altar and pray for? Who do you turn that TV off at night and get on your knees by your couch and pray for them some more? Who do you plead the blood over when you're pleading the blood of Jesus? Who do you walk around and call their names out? Not just your family, but your neighbor. Not just the ones that you go to church with, but all of us in the inner city. All of us in the country. All of us across the USA need you to call my name out in prayer. I want you, Tim, to call my name out in prayer. Amen. Who are you praying for? Don't tell me you ain't got time, because that ain't the answer. <laughs> Who are you praying for? I go to Ukraine. I do a Bible school and assembly of God in Ukraine. I teach there 10 days. On my way out of town, headed back to Moscow to catch the plane, they said, we want to stop by this little house here. There's 10 little ladies that live here. They're all over 80 years old. And we want you to stop and have prayer with, with them. Listen, you ain't been to a prayer meeting. You're getting a prayer meeting with 10 80-year-old women. I mean, I knew they was pleading the blood in Ukraine. What are that language is? Ukrainian. They pleading the blood. God, I ain't never been to a prayer meeting like that. So I took my little notebook out. I got a notebook. And I laid this hand right here on the front page of that notebook, and I drew my hand off. You know how you can circle your fingers and stuff? I drew that hand off and handed it to that first little lady. I did it 10 times, just like this. Today, in the Ukraine, if they ain't all dead and gone to heaven, there is 10 85-year-old women praying for Tommy Combs today. I'm talking about who you're praying for. 
who you're praying for. You gotta have somebody that you call out to God on an everyday basis. Get saved, get healed, get delivered, get set free, do something. Move on them, God. Take care of this. Better than that, let me ask you this. Who's praying for you? Who's praying for you? I want you calling my name out to God. What's your name? Myra? Give me that name. I can't read this. <laughs> Demarius Lunga. Is that correct? That's good. I can't even pronounce it. I want you praying for me from now on. You hear me? <laughs> let, me let me tell you about somebody that prayed for me. I'm 10 years old, living in Walker County, Alabama, coal mining town of Dora, Alabama. My daddy stayed underground 42 years. My grandfather stayed underground 44 years. My daddy made $2 a day digging coal, and we lived on that. Of course, this was 50s, early 50s. I got sick. Didn't know what the problem was. How many know what a company doctor is? A company doctor works for the company. That's the reason he's called company doctor. Mayberry. I go the company doctor. Now some of you are old enough to remember how good penicillin used to be. If you had a cold or flu, what did you get? If you hurt your elbow, what did you get? A penicillin shot. If you turned your ankle, what did you get? A penicillin shot. The needle was that big around. They wasn't little old bitty things like we got today that stick you in little bitty stick in your arm. It's going to be all right, honey. Here we go. Are you done? No, this was a hurt one. I mean right there. I'm talking about a hurt. It hurt all the way through and come out on the other side. It hurt. I'm still sick. I go back to the company doctor in two weeks. You know what I got? Penicillin shot over here. Same needle had to be. It hurt twice as bad. I go back the third time. I've been sick six weeks. I'm spitting bile from my mouth. My eyeballs are yellow. I've turned yellow. The disease in that day, we called it yellow jaundice. Today, hepatitis. That day, we called it yellow jaundice. I had a jaundice, yellow jaundice. The doctor didn't give me a penicillin shot. He said, this boy needs to go to the hospital in Birmingham, Alabama today. We didn't own a car. Daddy gets out of the mines at 4.30. My uncle gets out of the mines at 4.30. We borrow my uncle's car and drive me to Birmingham, Alabama to the hospital. Get there at 8 p.m. on Thursday night. The doctors took me to the back. Mom and Daddy sitting in the waiting room. I stay back there an hour. They come out and tell Mom and Daddy he should have been here six weeks ago. Your son's liver is destroyed. Your son is going to die in five days, four days, three days. We're going to give him some IVs. Your son's going to die. I'm 10 years old. They didn't know my mama, and they didn't know my grandma because they knew how to plead the blood. On Sunday morning, there was a man came on television at 9 a.m. on every TV channel in across America. Bob, his name was Oral Roberts. He did the healing hour, the first healing ministry television man in the USA. In Birmingham, he came on at 9 a.m. on Channel 6. Now listen, we didn't have no 197 channels. We had three. 
ABC, CBS, NBC. <laughs> 190 of them is not worth watching. I don't know why. I'm going to take a sidebar right here. Watch this. Boom. You remember where I'm standing. You got it? Don't raise your hand. Don't raise your hand. Don't raise your hand. What did I say? How many got HBO in your house? Hale's box office. You pay extra to get that trash in your house. Oh, I like to watch the boxing. Liar, liar, pants on fire. You like to watch the naked women. It, 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 Hale's box office. That's what it is. How many times you got to hear GD? How many times you got to see people's throat cut? How many times you got to watch that trash? Well, let me tell you what your kids do. You're in the kitchen making hot dogs. And they got the remote. And they got a guard at the door. They're watching mama cook hot dogs. And they're watching HBO. You're getting that filth in your kids and your grandkids because you pay $10 a month extra to get it in your house. The guards say, here she comes. You know what they do? Mice one button. You've got one button on your remote that changes the channel back to where it was. <laughs> Cartoons. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. She's gone. Back on the trash. Who are you praying for? On Sunday morning, or you got me? Right here is where I'm supposed to be. Sunday morning. At 9 a.m., Oral Roberts came on television in Birmingham, Alabama. My mother and my grandmother are praying for me and pleading the blood of Jesus over my healing in my body. Oral Roberts does this. If you need a healing, touch the television. Remote, we're an African village. Our TV was not in the top of the ceiling. It was a little black and white down by the bed. You could reach over and touch it. Did you know you got a knob on that thing you turn it on and off with? You don't have to use a remote. It's got a knob on it. <laughs> My mother reached over and put her hand on Oral Robert's hand and put that other hand right here on my stomach. And you know what she says? God, heal my boy, and I'll give him to you. You know where that's at? 1 Samuel chapter 1, when Hannah said the same words, God, heal my boy. And Samuel was born out of that prayer. One of the greatest prophets we ever had was Samuel, known as David King. Instantly, not in a minute. Tim, not in a minute, not after a while. Instantly, the power of God came into my hospital room with a blue mist. The blue mist rolled into that room and knocked my mama out on that side of the bed and knocked my grandma out on that side of the bed. I sat up in the bed and Jesus walked up to my bed. He came right up to the bottom of my bed. I saw the Look with me with those bluish gray eyes and that brown hair and that beautiful beard. And I got a brand new liver in one second. Somebody give God some praise. Somebody give God some praise. Somebody give God some praise in this house. My God, my God, my God. Who are you praying for? Who are you praying for? If you want to see that tonight, you can watch that tonight. SidRoth.org archives. He, he recreated the whole thing. He's got the most beautiful, handsome, 10-year-old kid playing me you have ever seen. Who are you praying for? How's your prayer life? You got to have a prayer life. Who do you take enough to go to the altar and pray for? I pray, first of all, that you prosper and you be in health. Now, if you go back in the original text, it's reversed in the Greek. I pray that your soul prospers, then you be in health. Your soul's got to prosper first, then the other comes. 
above all things, I pray that you be in health. You know, the church today, Satan has messed us up on prosperity in the church. Amen. Satan messed us up. We're not supposed to make a bunch of money. We're not even supposed to talk about money. I said a while ago, I'm thankful I make a lot of money. Somebody said, oh, you ain't supposed to say that. Why not? Abraham made a lot of money. The Satan has messed up the church, so we're ashamed of it. We are ashamed of it, and we, we talk about it like, oh, I got to be poor. I got to. No, you don't. He's distorted the biblical concept of prosperity. That's what Satan's done to us. He wants you to think about all the church wants is your money, 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 money. Listen to me. Prosperity is more than about money. It's more than about money. It's more than about wealth. It's more than about material things. God wants you to prosper. So I say prosper. God, don't limit God to money when you say prosper. It's more than about that. Write it down. Get this. Here's what it means. Prosper. Here's what it means. A way. A journey to travel well. It means to travel well. On your journey. I'm on my way to heaven, and I promise you, I am going to travel well on my way to heaven. I am going to travel well on my way to heaven. I'm going to be healthy, wealthy, and wise on my way to heaven. That's what that root word means. Prosper means to travel well. A journey to travel well. John saying life is a journey and you got to travel well on that journey. There must be a destination if you're traveling on a journey and I got a destination, I'm going to walk the streets of gold. I am going to travel well because I'm going to heaven. Whatever I got to do to get there, I'm going to do it to get there. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. To travel well, to be successful. So I come here to Phoenix from a little town in Walker County, Alabama named Dora to tell you something. I come here to tell you I speak success into this group. I come here to tell you I speak success on your journey and I want you to travel well. I, somebody ought to get this now. I, 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 I come here to tell you I speak success into your ministry, whatever ministry that is. Whatever ministry God given you, I say success in that ministry. Whatever he gave you to do, be successful with it. I speak success into your finances. I want you to make so much money that you could pay so much tithe, you could give away 90% and live on the 10. I want you to travel well in your finances. I want you to travel well in your calling. Whatever your calling is, travel well. I speak success into your calling. I speak success. Even when you have a trial or tribulation or trouble, I speak success into that. I speak success when you have the enemy come against you. I speak success into this house. I speak success into full gospel business men. I speak success into you and your family. I speak success as everybody's watching on streaming. In nations around the world, I speak success to you tonight as you're watching on streaming around the world tonight. I speak success and healing in this house. I speak success in your relationship, whatever that is. I speak success in your emotions, whatever that is. Above all things, I pray, I pray to God, and God will get all the glory as I travel well. I'm going to give God all the glory. Give God a praise right there. Wow. Where God guides, God provides. So get this, full gospel. These charters that you've got are going to start doubling and tripling in size in 2020. And God's going to provide the money for that to happen. It's going to happen. And it's going to happen big time. By the time July gets here and you meet in Miami in July, your name is going to be known around the world again like it was before. 
get ready for it. It's going to happen quickly, quickly, quickly. Listen, you and I know some folks that's got a lot of money. They got more money than they'll ever, ever need. They're living a miserable life with all that money. A miserable life. They got money. They got more money than you and I ever think about having money. But they're going to miss out because they're living a miserable life because they don't know Jesus as their Savior. Say prosper. A journey to travel well. Everything you do need goes into that text. But you got to quit talking about it like I'm talking about it. And you got to quit shouting about it like you're talking about it. You got to start walking in it tonight. You got to walk out this door and start walking and on travel well. You got to start walking in your prosperity. You got to start walking in it. And not keep talking about it. Keep talking about it. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. I want you to travel. I speak success. I declare it. I prophesy and declare it. The next 10 years of your life are going to be the greatest 10 years of your life you've ever lived. This decade is going to be something else for the church. Around the world. Around the world. Now listen, get this. All that I'm saying would don't do any good. And the devil gets the glory if we shout about it in here and don't walk in it out there. We got to walk in it on the outside world. We got to do it. I'm telling you, let me repeat that. The devil wants to wear you out shouting, but you got to walk in that prosperity. You got to walk in it. What the problem we have here is these messages today that we watch on TV. Success, journey, walk in prosperity, writing the message, so we can get somebody to say amen. That's a lie of the devil. He wants you to mess you up about, distort you about prosperity. I pray that you might prosper. I'm talking to you that you might prosper and be in health. Amen. Life's a journey. And on that journey, you got to walk. Now, if I really want to know about your life, I can watch your walk. All day, I can walk with you. I can see what you do. I can see your habits. I can see how you talk. I can see how you walk. And I know what your life's really all about because of your walk. Your walk tells me who you really are. Your habits, your lifestyle, your commitment, how you live. <coughs> Look with me to Ephesians 2.10. <coughs> Ephesians 2.10. For we are God's workmanship, created in Jesus Christ unto good works, which God has ordained that we should walk in them. Let me read it again. Ephesians 2.10. For we are God's workmanship. That's you. You're a work of God. Created in Jesus Christ unto good works, which God ordained we should walk in them. Your life is a journey, and on this journey, you got work to do. You got things that you should do for God. Your life is a journey, stuff God wants you to do and desires that you do. Now, listen to me. If your desire is to work with children, I want to know why you're trying to sing on the praise team because you don't sound good as you think you do. <laughs> but if you sing on a praise team, you don't need to be down in children's church. Whatever God puts in your heart to love, that's where you need to be working. Whatever your love is, your love may be banking. You need to be in the, in the banking business. I'm, whatever it is, we have certain assignments that we have. John 17, 4, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, that John. Jesus prays this prayer. Listen to this prayer. Jesus is praying this prayer. Father, I have glorified thee in the earth, on the earth. I have satisfied or completed my work, my assignment, which you gave me to do. So my question to you is, how are you going to glorify God? Complete your assignment. Complete the assignment God's goal. Jesus said, I glorify you because I've completed my assignment. What you want me to do? Jesus had an assignment. He glorified God by completing the assignment. The only way in you and me can give God the glory is complete the assignment in every detail he's given us to do. Well, what is my assignment? 
I'm telling you what to do. You go on a 10-day fast. You go on a 30-day fast. You go on a three-day fast. And you pray every hour on the hour and ask God, tell me what my assignment is. And don't want me to come down and put my hand on your head and say, I see your assignment is going to Indochina. You may not even have a passport. You ain't going nowhere. You find out what your assignment is. You. You find out what the assignment is. But I'm going to tell you what our corporate assignment is here, full gospel. Jesus told us what the assignment was. Make me some disciples. Make me some disciples. Make me some disciples. We've been good at making members. We've been good at building buildings. We've been good at great choirs. We've been good at building gyms and outbuildings and buildings and conference buildings. We've been good at doing budgets. We've been good having great singers and praise teams. But Jesus did say, build me no buildings. He said, make me some disciples. That's your assignment. That's my assignment. Make me some disciples. Make me some disciples. Jesus said, make me some disciples. He don't care how many members you got in your church. He cares about how many disciples you got in your church. Because they're doing the work. Doing the work. They're doing the work. Complete your assignment. Complete your assignment. That's what God's called you to do. Now, I was a student at Dora High School, when we had 33 graduate from my senior class, 33. I went to junior college two years, didn't have no money to do nothing else. Ended up at the University of Alabama. My daddy quit school at third grade. My mama quit school to fifth grade. I was the first one ever to finish high school in my family. First one ever surely to go to college in my family. But my goal in life, one of them, was to finish college at the University of Alabama. And I completed that through student loans and, and scholarships and whatever I could get. While I was there, I took a history of China class. In that class was 366 students in one class. I had 33 graduate with me, 366. The professor says he calls a roll. That takes all day. <laughs> he called a roll. Today, you don't do that. You scan your card when you go through the door. That's how they get to know if you're present, that you scan your card when you walk through the door. He says, I will not call a roll ever again in this class. It takes too long. That's good news to me. He ain't going to call a roll. Then he says something else I liked. We're going to have one test at the end of the semester. And how you do on that test determines your grade. That sounded good to me too. Because I never went back. Every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 8 o'clock when that class met, I slept in my bed so good I had a girlfriend in that class and she went every week three days a week and I would see her and say what are y'all doing she said studying the history of China I said good I never went back to the last day on the last day we had to write a paper I wrote the paper and turned it in I knew he's going to give every one of us a B. I knew it in my heart. Everybody's going to get a B. I didn't care. I got my paper back. Is it, I can't see for that light right there. Is any school teachers in the house? Is it, well, Here's one over here. Is any others over here? Like his, here's another lady and another and another. Let me ask you school teachers something. Why do you have to write elf in red? Why? 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 Isn't the elf in blue ink the same? 
I mean, in black ink, in an elf, an elf in black ink, isn't it the same elf? No, it's not. You've got to have it in red. And you've got to circle it three times. <laughs> I made an elf, and he circled it three times in red. You know what he wrote on my paper? Well written. This was not the assignment. Listen to me, everybody. Get silent and listen to me. One day, you're going to stand before Jesus the Christ. He's going to be your judge. And he's going to write elf and red blood of Jesus to those of us who don't know him. And he will say the words that I hope nobody in this room and nobody watching streaming and watching these DVDs ever hears, depart from me. I never knew you. I'll never hear those words. Never. I'll do what it takes to complete my assignment. Give God a praise in the house. I will do what it takes to complete my assignment. I'll do what it takes to complete my assignment. 3 John 1, 2, I pray that you prosper and glorify God by completing your assignment, and you're going to have assignments, and you've got to find out what your assignment is and do it. Now we go to the second part of this verse. I pray that you prosper, have a good journey, have a good way, complete your assignment, and now he starts talking about my body. I pray that you prosper and be in health. I looked at the word health, and you know what it means? Medicine, healing, my body. He said, I want your body to be in health. Why would God start talking about my body here? Well, God tells us why. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And if the Holy Ghost lives in you, and the, you're the temple of the Holy Ghost, you gotta treat that body right. Now, I can tell, and I'm talking to me, I need to get on a good walking program, and so do about half of you. But I don't. That's not treating my body right. I don't want to give out in the middle of a sermon. I want to be able to handle it, get my endurance up. He talks about a healing anointing for our body. I'm, I'm committed to, God is committed to blessing you, and he blessed you. You've got to protect your body, heal your body, and refresh your body. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He leads me. He don't get behind me. He leads me. He leads me. He makes me do things. He, I don't want to do them. He makes me do them. Lie down in green pastures. He wants you to lie down in a good place. He wants to take care of you. God don't want you to burn out, blow up, or go away. He wants to refresh your body. And the only way you're going to refresh your body is get in the Holy Ghost about every day in your life and get a period of time in the Holy Ghost. When's the last time you walked through your house pleading the blood of Jesus? When's the last time you took oil and anointed your kids' pillows so when they get into bed, they slide right out in the floor? <laughs> that boy of mine got tired of hitting the floor because I put so much oil on that bed, he was tired of it. <laughs> right out of the floor. Anointed my daughter's car. Anointed her car, the steering wheel, the car itself with oil and pleaded the blood of Jesus over her. When's the last time you laid hands on your grandkids and plead the blood? That's what this is talking about right here. I want to plead the blood of Jesus. You've got to refresh your body, and the only way you can have refreshing in your body is getting the Holy Ghost. God, you certainly. It's not a toddy for your body, my God. It's not a toddy for your body. S.A.A. Allen, ask him.
Those of you that know that story, ask him. Because his good friends told him after service, you need to sleep. You need to do this. And it ruined his ministry for years. Well, the to I'm talking about the top in the United States, A.A. A. Allen. The top. There wasn't nobody better. God used him. I was in a service with him in Birmingham, Alabama, where a kid was healed with 18 different deformities. Blind, deaf, crippled, halt, feet turned around backwards. It didn't matter. Dead people raised. You got to plead the blood and you got to stay in the Holy Ghost. You got to stay in the Holy Ghost and I don't care who's looking and I don't care who's watching. Well, we don't do Holy Ghost in my church anymore. They get a new church. Oh, we used to run. We used to shout. We used to have sinners saved. We used to have people baptized in the Holy Ghost. That ain't happened in our church in years. Get a new church. No sleep, all stress. Sleeping in the wrong bed. No. If you got to stop by Susie's house on your way home to your wife, you got a serious problem. You must realize what happens to your body affects your spirit. With your body, what happens to your soul affects your spirit. To prosper and be in health, it means your soul's got to prosper. I want to be all that God wants me to be. Sanctified is not a denomination. Living a sanctified life is not living a denominational life. Life is a journey, and your body's a temple. I speak success to you. I'm, I speak success to you, and you be healed in the name of Jesus. God said, be ye holy as I am holy. Live a holy life. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. The world laughs at us because on Sunday we're doing this. <laughs> and on Monday we stand by the water cooler and listen or tell those jokes. And the world laughs at us. They used to come to us and beg us to pray for them. When's that happened in your life lately? No power, no authority, not living a sanctified life. You got to stay in the Holy Ghost. I pray that you prosper and be in health. God is calling this church, your church, my church, this group to holiness. To holiness. I said his church, not mine or yours. It's his church. Now listen to this. I threw two fastballs, now here the curveball comes. I pray that you prosper and be in health. Now I want your soul to prosper. Now I want your soul to prosper. My prayer is for you to be successful and prosper, but your soul's got to prosper first. Your soul has got to prosper it's not just about you and me walking in success or how the world believes it or how we're healed. The assumption is you'll only prosper to the point your soul is prospering. You've got to know Jesus as your Savior. If your soul is prospering, then everything about your life is prospering in the name of Jesus. I pray above all things that you prosper and be in health. Well, how do I know I'm on the right journey? Glad you asked. One, saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, do your assignment, and then you will have success in God. Listen, in Psalms 145, it begins, Psalms 145 begins, praise ye the Lord. That's how Psalm 145 begins. Psalms 146, you know how it begins? Praise ye the Lord. <laughs> Psalm 147, you know how it begins? Praise ye the Lord. 148, praise ye the Lord. 149, praise ye the Lord. Are you getting this? 150 begins, praise ye the Lord, but it ends like this. Let everything that hath breath Praise ye the Lord. Somebody give him praise in this house right now. 
Praise ye the Lord. Or stand to your feet and give God some praise. Come on. Stand to your feet and give God some praise. Come on, give him some praise. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Come on, give him praise. Praise ye the Lord. You may be seated. You may be seated. There's about three ladies here. You have dreams and visions every night. You dream them, and you write them down in a notebook. I want you to come up here. At least three ladies that have dreams and visions every night, and you write them down in a notebook beside your bed. I got two. I need one more. Thank you. Come stand up. Right here is a little more room. Yeah, they got that thing. Come over here so they can see the projector. Right here is good. We got some room. You, a couple of you guys help me. <clears throat> Come here. How long have you been doing this? I'm not sure. Long time. Ten years? Yeah, probably. For sure, seven. Seven. How long have you been doing this? Years. One year. Years. Years. Not one year, but years. And how long have you been doing this? 15, 20 years. 15 or 20 years. But you get a dream and vision, and you get it, and you write it down mm -hmm. on a notebook or a pad beside your bed. It's very important for all of you to do this, is to write it down when you have it. If you go back to sleep, you'll forget it. So get up and write it down and prophesy it. God is going to start using you three ladies in prophecy in the workplace and prophecy in your churches. And what is happening is you are writing this stuff down now and it's prophecy from God for you to speak to someone else. It's just not for you. You gotta speak this out. Anybody know who Alan Jackson is? Alan Jackson is a good friend of mine. Country music superstar. You know where he gets most of his music? He searches out and finds people who do exactly what I called out, prophesy, write it down, and turns it into music. Which one of you does the poetry? The poetry. You not only prophesy, but you're writing poetry on the side. Any, either one of you? You're not writing any poetry. You will begin to write poetry. That's where the music will come from. And I'm going to tell you, you heard me tonight speak it into these three women's life. Somebody's going to pick it up and make something out of it. And you're going to have the rights. You're going to have the rights to that music. So I'm telling you, you're fixing to prosper, young lady. I'm telling you that God's hand is on you and you're going to prosper. Give God a praise in the house, somebody. Whoa. Jesus. Migraine headaches. Now, I am not talking about a headache that an aspirin will handle. I'm talking about a migraine that keeps you away from work the next day. Get up here now. A migraine. A migraine. How long you had these? Um, since the mid eighties. About thirty years you've been suffering with migraines. No medication helps you, not really. Just a little, but they come back. Okay. Tonight is your night. Amen. Because they'll never ever come back again. What's your name? D D E E. Mm -hmm. Boom. Boom. Not another migraine can come to you. I prophesied and into your life. Give God a praise for that. Who else? I got somebody else with a migraine. Anybody else? You can, you can sit. 
You can sit. Anybody else with a migraine? Don't miss this. This is good. Don't miss this. You got it. one foot that's shorter than the other foot. Help her up. One foot that's shorter than the other foot, and you walk a little bit of limp like this. A little bit of limp. A little bit of limp. God's going to lengthen your leg and show everybody in this house a miracle. Anybody? Got a little bit of limp. In fact, it's your right foot that's shorter. And you walk just like I'm walking right now. This is the way you walk, basically, because of this limp that's in your life. God's going to heal that. Whether you come up here or not, God's still going to heal it. God's still going to heal it tonight. God, I pray right now for these legs to lengthen in Jesus' name. It's going to happen in the name of Jesus. Sciatica, the nerve in your back, goes all the way down the leg into the knee, all the way down to the knee into the foot. This sciatic nerve right here. Now, quickly, 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 quickly. I'm pointing to somebody. Quickly, sciatica. How long you had this? Two years. Two years. Which side's it on, Joel? It's spinal stenosis. Spinal stenosis. And the name, mm, yes. there it went right then. It, when I touched it, it went. Absolutely right. Who? God, you got it good. In Jesus' name. What you got? David, it goes down the leg. Yeah. Right here. It starts right here and goes down your leg. You're getting healed now. And take it in Jesus. Oh, give him praise in the house. Who else? I got somebody else. What you got? Sciatica. Which side? Both sides. Both sides, sciatica. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, you shot. You healed, you healed, you healed. Yes, sir. The left side. All the way down. In the name of Jesus. Right now. Oh, God, yes. Give him praise in the house. What you got? Oh, yeah, you're with me. Woo, boo. Yes, sir. You're catching me. You ever seen the catchers go? I've had catchers just when I go, whoo, all the catchers go. I got to catch. Stomach. Stomach. What's the matter with it? Stomach ache. Oh, hold. Don't move. Hyenal hernia. Hyenal hernia. Right now, quickly. Hyenal hernia. Come, come, come. I'm talking to somebody that's got it. Hyenal hernia. Hyenal hernia. Where you at? I'm talking to you. This man's going to stand still while you get healed. Hyenal hernia. Let her get through. Well, we got somebody in the way on the floor. We can't get through. Somebody will be praising God. Where are you from, sir? What's your name? Jose. Jose, where are you from? El Salvador. El Salvador. Yeah. I built a church in El Salvador many, many years ago. Yeah. Great country. Yeah. El Salvador shall be saved. <laughs> I prophesied to you El Salvador is getting saved I'm talking about El Salvador is going to be the bench point That takes all of Central America <laughs> Woo! Woo! I ain't a hernia Right here Put your hand on yourself right there In the name of Jesus God the healing power of God's flowing through you right now Wait a minute All the way down through your stomach, all the way down through the system, all the way through the digestive system. The healing power of God's flowing right now in Jesus' name. My God, you I know you have to touch. Where's my man at? Heal this stomach in Gary. In the name of Jesus. Let the healing power of God flow through him now from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. <sighs> Somebody's got floaters in your eyes. Floaters. They just move back and forth and back and forth. Floaters. You got floaters. Right now they're healed. You'll be here tomorrow. You're going to testify behind that pulpit tomorrow. The floaters are gone right now in Jesus' name. Go give him praise. You have floaters. Oh, they're gone in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Yes, ma'am. Come here quickly. Yes, ma'am. Hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. What do you got? Yes. In the name of Jesus, I command that cyst. That not, whatever that buildup is, to disappear tonight 
In fact, you're going to examine yourself. Listen to this. Holy Ghost just told me. When I get done praying for you, you and this lady right here are going to the ladies' room, and you're going to examine yourself, and it's gone. In Jesus' name. Say, I got it. Say it. I got it. I got it. I'm healed. I'm healed. It's gone. It's gone. Go. Go. Do it right now. Go. Go. Come back. Hurry. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Dry eye. You have dry eye and you use drops every day. How, how can this happen? How can you stand here and call out every one of them and they'd be here? God is in control. I wish I could do this on a regular basis. Stay there. Dry. Oh, yes. What's your name? Terry. Carrie? Terry. Terry. Mm -hmm. How long have you had dry eye? Mm, years. It's been a, two or three years at least. Take your glasses off. Take your glasses off. Can you make tears? Can I make them? Does tears flow at times? You still can do the tears. Well, I mean, I cry, but I mean, yes, do you cry and make oh, yeah. tears? Yes, yes. Some people have dry eye and they can't even make a tear. No, I can make tears still, but they're really. Oh, you got it tonight, good. In Jesus' name, I command these eyes to make tears and the fluid ducts in your eyes to flow freely right now. You got it. How long you had this? You put the drops in? In the name of G oh goodness gracious. And you not only have floaters, you got permanent dots and dry, and dry eye. Take your glasses off. Don't forget where you put them because if I laid my glasses down there, I'd never know where they are. In the name of Jesus right now. What's your name? Jerry. Jerry, you're getting healed right now. Wow, wow, wow. You dry eye. Take your glasses you like to read the Bible, but it, it hurts. I mean, they. How long you had this? How long? Maybe five years. Five years. Your name is John. What a great name! I've been preaching about you. In the name of Jesus, John, dry eyes getting healed now. In Jesus' name. You'll no longer have burning sensation in your eye. You can read like you want to without any problems from this night on. In, Je Woo! in Jesus' name. Now, Cynthia, you got it while ago. Now, what are you going to get it again for? Dry eye. Yes. In the name of Jesus, Cynthia, you're getting healed tonight. In Jesus' name. Dry eye is getting healed. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Give God a praise, somebody. Come on. If you're taking your pills and you're supposed to take your pills at 9 o'clock, you're late. That's what I'm talking about. And a lot of you are late getting here, too. Oh, I didn't say that. Yeah. And my left eye. Floaters in the left, left eye. eye. No, the left eye is dry and it sticks. Like when I move it, it'll stick sometimes. Your eye can't stick anymore. <laughs> For the name of Jesus, Steve, you're getting healed tonight. No eye can stick. The floaters are gone and the dry eyes heal. <sighs> Take it in Jesus' name. <laughs> Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Floaters in the name of Jesus. What's your name? Martha. Martha, you're getting healed tonight. Say, I got it. I got it. Give God a praise in the house, everybody. Wow, 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 wow. Now listen. The book is out there, The Blood. I'll go to the table right now and sign a few books for you. If you come out, they're $10. They're usually $19.95, but for this group, we're going to $10. So you can get two for $20. But... Go to SidRoth.org and watch all the programs. I got 20 programs on YouTube. Tommy Cones Ministries YouTube. I got all my books on Amazon. The Blood Book and In His Presence has just been published 
on Amazon in the Spanish language. It'll go around the world in the Hispanic world and I'm waiting for God just to take that thing and fly with it because it's gonna be so good. So you can get that book, all the books are on Amazon. You can pick them up there or you can call my office and I'll send it to you, whatever, whatever, whatever you want to do. Tomorrow night, don't miss. This is just a little bit. Tomorrow night, my sermon on the blood is called Weapons of Mass Destruction. <laughs> you can't miss it. You can't miss it. If you bring somebody in an ambulance, just hire it one way. Don't, don't bring them in a the wheelchair. Bring the blind to halt. Let's turn Phoenix upside down with this group, all right? Let's turn Phoenix upside down with this group. Not me, but this group. Turn Phoenix upside down. Praise God. Say, God is good. I will prosper. I will be in health. And my soul is prospering. Because I know Jesus. Oh, I give him praise in the house one time. Yay! Yeah.